Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me through the mic? Yeah. Just okay. keep it close. All right. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Grace Liao. Uh, just a show of hands, how many of you actually graduate with a degree that is not computer science? All right, we've got almost half of the room. Um, so I actually graduate as a actual aeroscience major. How many of you know what that means? Yeah, <laughs> all right. So I actually uh, started being a developer five years ago because for fear of that I will eventually be replaced by a computer. Um, and so far, my journey being a developer has been great. I love this role. And today I'm going to share with you um, my three months experience uh, using, uh, NGR, uh, using NGRX uh, techniques and make it work uh, Interop interoperate with AG Grid, some of the challenges that I've faced and some of the workarounds that I've found. All right, so three months ago when Oleg, who's my manager, um, talked to me, well, you know this great thing in GRX, why not you check it out and make it work and start, start on your new, new project? And I'm like, okay, let me check it out. The first thing that you do probably is go to GitHub, find an example app, pull it down, and then hopefully you can do some control C, control V, or command C, command V, right? And so I went there and I found um, on, their, um, on their site there is this example app, and prob how many of you have actually pulled that repository down and looked? Cool, okay, so I pulled that down, and then I did some analysis, and then uh, three patterns actually stood out to me. Uh, the first pattern is that most of the components were actually pretty simple, and they're DOM components. And what I, what I mean by that is um, if you are familiar with the Unix philosophy book, which is actually my, one of my favorite tech books, is um, good software uh, design, uh, a component should be working as a filter, meaning you get input and then you get output without mutating state. So when I saw this pattern in NGRX, I was like, ooh, this is already like talking good software design. The second pattern that I spot was some other components, they do have s the store injected in the, con in the constructors. And in the example app, those are the components that they call container components. And generally those are the pages, like 404 not found, or there's this, this page that you find a book, things like that. Um, and the third pattern that I found was um, that the HTTP calls and what Oleg and Mike uh, talked about, the services, services are actually wrapped around uh, in the effect annotation. And I was like, oh, this is pretty awesome. And uh, I'm gonna, in the next three slides, we will see some code that illustrates those three patterns. This first example is a DOM component, which we can see that there are four attributes inside of the component. Uh, two are inputs and two are outputs. The second example is, this is a com container component, which is a page, a fine book page, and where we see that um, in the constructor there's a reference to the store, and then there's also three other um, attributes um, for this component to reference certain states in the store. The third example here is uh, we can see that um, inside of this, um, the constructor, there is a reference to the service, which is Google Books. And um, inside of the code block, which is a meta here, switch map, actually in there, it's making a request out to fetch the response that contains all the books according to the current param. After that, I feel pretty confident. Well, NGRX seems to be a good um, pattern to follow, and I felt pretty comfortable and pretty awesome. And then I was like, okay, let me go to AJ Grid and see what I need to implement in order for to, to mix and match. And this is what I saw. So in, in order to make AG Grid do a server-side filtering and, and fetching and make the infinite scroll feature uh, available, I need to implement these two interfaces. One is to get row params, and the second one is um, to, for, for data source. And I was scratching my head because this is pretty much a black box to me, um, which makes 
two things very hard. First thing is, remember that we talked about the services that are actually wrapped inside the effect. But look at this data source. How should I wrap this in the effect? It's pretty hard. And the second challenge that I was facing was sometimes I need, and some of my colleagues are sitting here who gave me requirements, <laughs> as there's a toggle bot button that, that keeps track of what view you're on. I need that state to be part of the request to go to the server. And with this interface, I'm like, oh, how do I do this? And my emotions switched. <laughs> that was an exaggeration. Um, so now I still need to get my paycheck because uh, how many of you have heard of this cycle as developers get paid to buy coffee and to buy coffee to produce more code and then to produce more code to get the paycheck and the circle just goes forever. So I need to get paid. So I'm like, I need to find a workaround. Um, so I'm going to show two code snippets. This is the first one is that I was able to do what I need to do. And, the diff and two things to point out in here is in this constructor, I have injected the store, which in most of the cases, the page, the, uh, the container components also has the store inside the con constructor. So that's pretty good. What is a little bit different is this grid data source. <laughs> the data source was injected to the component, which it's the workaround that I have to do in order to set the data source after the grid initializes in the component. The second workaround that I have to do is look at the service, com uh, service class. Generally, we it's fair game to inject the HTTP client uh, into the constructor. But in here, we also have to inject the store. Why? There are two reasons. The first reason is that inside of AG Grid, it in turn tracks the loading state of the grid. But the application in a whole doesn't know that. So I need to dispatch an action to tell the application, stop showing the loading. So that's one reason. The second reason is, as we mentioned before, I need to, sh to add the, the toggle state on my, in my application to send it as the request, which it's part of um, yeah, the HTTP that you can see, it's the slight green shade that's omitted there. Um, so these are the, th the, the, the two workarounds that I found in order to have AGGrid work inside an NGRX application. And that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? or? Uh, oh. So, um, so the question is, and if I'm hearing correctly, is to abstract the store from the component into the service and then inject different services into the component? Is that your question? Um, are you talking about this uh, this service or another service? So I was thinking about how to create a new service that would have a store as a dependency. Mm -hmm. That service would then get passed to essentially a component. It's just an abstraction for something that I'm trying to figure out. I'm not sure if that mm -hmm. would be beneficial here, but I was thinking about I was thinking that maybe like a shared service generally won't yeah. before and GRX, we, yeah, so how we share the, s the state. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's an alternative of doing it, definitely. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Well, thanks for that thought. Uh, one question I have, and this is kind of to you, or and I meant to ask this before, but is MPRX is kind of like a fancy wrapper around a service? Like, you can do a lot of what you can do with MPRX with just a service, right? Depending on the state at which you inject it into your module. Um, is, I mean, is that, I, I've never used MPRX, so all of this is fairly new. So I'm just curious, is it, is it just kind of like a enhanced service where can you do it or are there a lot of scenarios where maybe you might just want to use a service to store state in to um, information across components or according to my three months experience with NGRX um, the the module which is the main module is a store NGRX store I think a lot of there's a lot of dark magic inside that module that manages updating the store for you when you use effect to uh, to manage side effects okay. and so I that burden is removed from me to the library so I don't know the internals how it works but if w is there an alternative way of, 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 of doing it probably but uh, like just thinking, kind of just mm -hmm. in how it exactly works and I was, just I, I was also curious can you inject this at a at different levels and get different instances of a store, or are all the stores always global? Um, always global. They're always global. It's so the same global. reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in here, I'm I'm using the namespace from root, and this is a pattern that I spot from the example app as to namespace the state because okay. there are different levels. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Any more thoughts? You don't get a mic because we got okay, a mic.